Email me, tmaso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel, my Instagram, or our website. Reach out to me directly, tmaso at thewatchbox.com. Now, built in 2018, December 2018 specifically. Why? Because we know it's stamped on the case. This is the Breitling Navitimer B0143, a combination of rose gold and stainless steel. It measures 43 millimeters, but that's 43 at the bezel. So in fact, it sits as a smaller watch on the wrist. 14.2 millimeters thick. You can see the watch features strong lug profiles, but courtesy of new Breitling CEO, Georges Kern, we now have a shorter span across the wrist. So 49 millimeters lug to lug, it doesn't swallow your wrist like before. The span between the lugs is 22 millimeters, so the watch has a nice modern proportional stance on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. It's a good looking watch, and with the added refinement of the rose gold accents, it goes from being a pilot's watch to a private jet pilot's watch, or even passenger's component. As you can see, the watch is substantial on the wrist. It'll slide under a jacket cuff, though not the tightest of dress sleeves, as the bezel is broader than the case itself. It is comfortable, and I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. Let's take a look at the hardware and the software. This is where Breitling has often punched above its weight, even during the Schneider era. You can see that the leather is remarkably expensive and tough and substantial, and there's a lot of it. Uh, Breitling uses alligator leather, large rectangular scale, rather than the cheaper and aviation-specific calfskin. There's a contrast stitch and if you look in profile you can see the sheer cut showing how many layers of leather we're talking about the timepiece of course has a buttery underside with a lovely more naturally grained calf skin and the buckle is a simple pin buckle in stainless steel but with an elevated bridge so the strap sits inside the buckle when it's on your wrist rather than stacking up underneath it could be like this instead it's like this attention to detail, strong. The case, likewise, is simple and strong, as this is a watch that largely channels the 1950s Navitimer 806 reference. As you can see, the mid-case is thin, and that's a hallmark of older watches, so Breitling's true to its heritage right there. There's a squared-off end profile to the lugs with a little bit of an expanding bevel. Everything's in high polish, and you can see the crown with a Breitling logo and two pump pushers historically inspired. Now, you'll note that the bezel itself is polished, but the recesses of the knurling are actually satinated for contrast. Turn it and you can see it is a bi-directional rotating circular slide roll. It's calibrated for many conventional aviation calculations from ground speed to fuel consumption, but fundamentally it's used for multiplication and division, which means once you're quick with it, and you will learn quickly, it's great for getting ahead of your friends while calculating the tip at a restaurant. They'll whip out your regular cell phone smartphone calculator, you'll whip out this and you'll beat them to the punch. Now the dial has a wonderful depth to it, first because of the traditional Navitimer slide rule, which acts as a silvered ray hawk, but also because the dial features applique rose gold plated indices, rose gold hands, and then sunken sub-registers. You'll note the very subtle tone on tone as the dial is nickel anthracite, but the registers are black. Georges Kern wants you to know when you see tone on tone dials on a Breitling chronograph today, that means an in-house caliber, and that's exactly what we have here. Pivoting on 47 joules, it's the in-house caliber B01, first launched in 2009 on the Chronomats, now available, water resistant down to 30 meters in this particular Navitimer. Now, as you can see, it is both a vertical clutch system, so there's no stagger or jump to the second sand. You can also leave the chronograph running without hazard, thanks to the vertical clutch. But there's also a polished column wheel, and that is traditional chronograph manufacture. Breitling has a distinguished history of chronograph manufacture dating back to the early 20th century, regaining its own ability to construct chronographs. In 2009, Breitling has advanced the state of the art with one of the best feeling column wheel operations you'll encounter. Now the watch features both hacking or stop seconds, as well as a quick set function for the date. The 47 joule movement with a three day power reserve, 70 to 72 hours, and a COSC chronometer certification. It's adjusted in five positions. It is a chronometer, therefore it is both technically sophisticated and very accurate. Now you can see it's mostly machine finished and that's the way at Breitling, but you get a set of Cote de Genève satin finish across the rotor, black polished peg heads as well as screw heads, satination across the wheels themselves. And as you can see, the levers, the horns of the chrome chronograph and the recentering hammers are all polished, so it's a good looking movement with a balance that beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, and I like the use of Etacron, meaning this watch can be regulated very, very precisely. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of the ultimate and most traditional of pilot's watches. Rolex is the sub, Omega is the Speedy Pro, the Navitimer is Breitling, own the icon.